What is up everybody? Trav and I are back in the garage working on Speedy and we're finally working on getting it down to the ground. I think we will uh, walk around and do some height measurements at some point before we actually get started because uh, I think all four corners of this car are sitting at a different height. To get it down low we have a type 1, a bug beam that has been narrowed three inches and once we get this on there we're also going to do a disc brake conversion which is nice trav got a zero offset disc brake kit so the disc brakes i know i bought one for pops 56 that was not a zero offset one and it actually pushed the wheels out about a half inch so pops 56 probably needs a narrowed front beam too but we will uh do some height measurements get the old beam off get this beam mounted right now we're trying to uh engineer something to get those bearings knocked in a little bit further so the seals will fit um yeah they need to go in just just that much there's one of the seals we need to get those bearing bearings in just a little bit further and i think uh we might actually have to go buy maybe just buy some pipe or something that's that size they're two different two different sizes on the on the opening so because those bearings are super thin super delicate and i don't we don't have anything to actually knock those in we actually use some giant washers and a couple bits of pipe to actually be able to hammer those in a little bit so everything's good on the front beam all the way around trav's over here measuring what did you have on the 28, 28 on the 27 and a half <laughs> Twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-eight and a half. <laughs> I think this is the highest corner right here. And twenty-nine. <laughs> so. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven and a half, twenty-eight and a half, twenty-nine. So, yeah, the car definitely has a uh, a gangster lean to it right now. So. Just a quick look now the thing beam has some extra bracing on it that the type 1 beam is not gonna have once we put it in um, and we pulled we pulled the bolts for this this lower bar out and we're actually setting our jack stands there that way normally we would have it on the beam holding the front of the car up but since all that's coming off we're not gonna do that um, we're gonna need to disconnect the brake lines so those can come off with the beam we'll have to disconnect some of the steering as well as like the steering dampener and obviously the steering the steering shaft from the rag joint right there and the easiest way to do that is pull the gas tank so we're gonna pull the gas tank it'll give us easy access to a lot of the stuff I was just talking about and uh, we'll take a look at everything after we get this gas tank out you can see the rag joint there which i don't know if you bought a new one but all right i was gonna say that one's looking a little crusty we got the two mounts on the top of the beam we got the steering damper we're gonna pull and we need to pull some of the steering arms off what are we doing b we're fixing speedy up, fixing speedy up. You got some work gloves on today? Old gloves you don't care about? That way your hands stay clean? Yeah? Trav's taking off the last four bolts right now that are holding on the front end. So we'll get the jack under it in a second here to help support it before we pull it all the way out. That side was actually hanging up and kind of wedge things as well as the aftermarket alarm speaker 
had the beam wedged and when the speaker gave way, it kind of dropped off the jack. So we lost a little bit of how we had it set up, but it's out. We're gonna move this one out of the way and start playing with the new one. Just because I don't know, and I'm going off of what Travis says, we're gonna see how this works out. But whoever he uh, originally talked to about doing the type one beam conversion said we need to put these spacers Shims. shims on the I'm gonna call them spacers because they said he said you double them up on the lower the lower portion of the beam to push the beam out a little bit which makes it so it's easier to align yeah I'm guessing maybe just the angle of the type 1 beam is different but that seems like a whole lot of spacer to me so I guess we'll find out how this works this was not super easy to get lined up and do so you can see the the spacers on the lower part of the beam right there to kick the beam forward, which according to whoever Trav talked to, they said do the double spacer. Um, to actually get this up in there and bolt it up was kind of a pain. You know, we have the, the four main bolts here on the front and the two tops. And it was a combination of getting some started, getting other ones super tight to get other bolts lined up. The hardest actually was getting the top lined up. I don't know if it was because of the spacers on the bottom. Um, on my side, I left them in. Trav pulled his and got his going. We had the top super tight, but so we've got it in now. Um, we've got to get the trailing arms on the, you know, knuckles and steering and brakes and everything else so we've got a ways to go but that's a pretty big step actually getting the beam set in there and uh hopefully it all works out what do you think trav i'm happy i like it moving <laughs> forward <laughs> uh, i told trav i'm getting sick of everything working when we work on his car and when we work on my cars nothing ever seems to go to plan Type three, three times money, three times trouble. Well, Trav doesn't remember how he took this apart. <laughs> and now that everything's narrowed, it might be a little weird. So uh, I'm going to stop recording for a little bit here and see if I can help figure it out. are coming together a little bit um, we're still I think we got everything figured out part of the problem was we were <laughs> we were comparing this to the thing being beam in the way it was assembled which uh, doesn't do much help considering this is a type 1 beam and everything goes together just a little bit different not gonna lie it is crazy hot we're in few days into September and I think we're still hitting 110 to 115 degrees here in Arizona so uh, working on cars right now is not that fun but hopefully that means we'll have some cars together when uh, well hopefully there'll be some car shows this this fall here in Arizona so hopefully we'll have some cars together for them on the tie rods actually put in got the rag joint tightened up our steering gear is still loose right now um, but we're getting a little closer to be honest I can't remember if we tighten the steering gear once we get the car back down on the ground to get kind of the right angle um, you know with the beam being shortened it did cause some some issues as you can see our steering columns a little off to the side part of that's because oh, get down low you can see the grease oops there we go the grease fitting right there so we actually do have a little bit of room to still pull the steering gear back not a ton i mean it's really close so right now it's us just kind of doing some of the fiddly stuff all the steering linkages are loose the steering gear is still loose 
and uh, we just got to figure out the, the best plan to get everything tightened back up. I tell you what, I don't know if you can tell by how I look. We've been in the garage most of the day and uh, I'm getting a little beat. So we'll see how much further we get today. Um, I can tell you the front end will probably be one video. And then when we get to do the back end, that'll be a separate video. But we want to get this as close as we possibly can. That way when it goes over for an alignment, they don't have to do a bunch of craziness. There is the caliper mounting bracket for the disc brake conversion. It's still the same day. Trav said I couldn't go home unless we put everything back together. So we have to finish at least the front end today. <laughs> but Trav bought this new fangled shenanigans here to, to grease bearings, which, uh, I mean, it does work. It does push grease through pretty good. But I honestly can't say that it's uh, that much cleaner or easier. But it did pack the bearing pretty good. At least on the other one we did, it pushed it all the way through, which was kind of nice. And as you can see, it's uh, super gooey on this one too. I still like to roll the bearings around a little bit just to get some movement in there. All right, viewers. In case you guys didn't catch it, because I didn't catch it at first was try to put the caliper brackets on backwards <laughs> i blame him because he wanted to keep going and try and hurry and knock this out today so i think uh i think whew, the lesson of the day is at least pay attention a little bit <laughs> So look guys, it's amazing. The rotors go on when the bracket's in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> I won't let him live that one down for a little bit. Although I will admit that when I first recorded showing you guys, I didn't notice either until it went time to put the rotors on. So we're moving along. I just wanted to show you the calipers for this kit Trav got. Um, I don't know if all the wide five kits have these this style caliper most of the kits that i've dealt with have kind of that generic dual bleeder caliper this one actually looks super beefy so, but this has full size giant freaking brake pads compared to most of the kits i've dealt with so um i might in the video notes i might get trav to shoot me over all the part numbers for the kits that he used on this one but looks like a pretty good disc brake conversion as i had said this looks like a super awesome brake kit compared to some of the ones that I've dealt with. We were able to get the other side on, but this side, which now it's probably too dark to see, you see the caliper bracket here. Now the shape of the pads, let's see if I can get it in camera. See the little hook? Both sides, right? So on the other side, we were able to actually easily put that pad in and hook it both sides, slide in, same with the other side. So this side, you can see how easy it should be. See that? Nice, nice and easy. The problem with this side caliper bracket is it's got too much meat on the bone to actually do it. Like I said, the other side was a walk in the park. I was yelling at Trav, what do you mean yours is on? How did you do it? Because he just slid it in. It went as easy as this side. Just friggin' right in. Bob's your uncle, good to go. So, we screwed around with the Dremel a little bit, trying to get some meat off of where it's hitting, where it should have been clearance, with no luck. The only thing we can do is pull the caliper back off put the brake pad in, put the caliper back on, and put the other side on and the caliper. So, I think it was about an hour and a half, two hours ago, Trav was, I think we're going on the two hour mark. Trav said, ah, it won't take that long to finish it off. I was like, ah, it'll be about two and a half hours because I just know how things go. And we're at the two hour mark right now. <laughs> 
So we got the rotor back off. Here's that inner pad. And you can see we got it slid in, rotor back on. But yeah, the other side, we were totally able to just put that pad in, no issues. Um, so this is a uh, MP Wide 5 kit. I wonder if anyone else has had that same issue with the left side, driver's side bracket where that pad won't slip in. Kind of a pain in the butt. It means anytime we actually change the brakes on this car, we'll have to uh, pull that rotor out to be able to slide these pads in. All right, guys, sorry. There's been a lot of questionable camera work, but I wanted to show you it's actually even worse than we thought. Thought we were gonna get away with being able to slide the pad on from the front. And for a brief moment, it looked like it was gonna work. My hands wanted to work for me. Okay, so you see the corner of the pad right there where my finger is going across? It is contacting the bracket too much, top and bottom. So our only option is to grind down the pad or grind down the whole inside of this bracket or both or I don't know. It's a long weekend and I'm sure Trav's not going to get any uh, response from whoever he bought the kit from. So we'll see what happens. What is up everybody? We are back for day two for me, day three for Trav. Although he didn't do a crazy amount on day two without me, but we, I'll flip you around here and we'll take a look at what Trav had to do to that caliper bracket to actually get the pad to work like it's supposed to. I know I tried to show you the other night, but it was getting pretty dark. But look how much material had to come off of that caliper bracket, both sides. Now we could have ground down the pad, but that would have led to us having to grind down pads every time it ever needed a brake job. But, oops, as you can see the pad, I mean, there's enough clearance, right? But that's how much material had to come off for that to actually work. So uh, I don't know, I'll eat my words a little bit because I thought this was gonna be a pretty decent uh, disc brake kit, which maybe it will be now that we've modified the crap out of it to actually make it function like it's supposed to. I wonder how many other people have gotten this disc brake kit from I think this is an MP kit from MP that have had the same issue. So it's amazing how quick and easy that went when uh, the pads actually fit like they were supposed to. So I've got my side done. Trav's got his side done. We've just got to get the brake lines hooked back up and then we can, um, we can bleed the brakes and put the car on the ground. Um, we're leaving, gonna leave the gas tank out so we can actually kind of get to all of the uh, tie rods from here plus Trav wants to clean out all the brake fluid that we uh, leaked out when we pulled the lines but hopefully we'll have it on the ground in not too long Whew. there you go hon <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's way lower than two inches <laughs> I'm guessing we have the adjusters most of the way down right now Because it has not even settled in. 
we're definitely lower than two inches. So I don't remember exactly what we were at before when we started it. I think it was 27 or 28 or something up front, but we're sitting at 24 right now. Problem is it's all the way down. So we are pretty much as low as it can go and there's no suspension travel whatsoever. So we're going to play with the adjusters and get the front a little bit more dialed in where we want it where Trav wants it and then uh, we'll move on to the back one of these days <laughs> we had to adjust the front beam up a, quite a bit um, to actually get some suspension travel out of it when it was down it was down now until we get the rear lowered and which when we lower the rear it's gonna bring the front up a little bit and we can get things dialed in a little bit more Trav is going to have to do a different tire size up front than what he's got. So the front end is going to come down a little bit more. The problem with the tire size he has right now is the exhaust port for the heater. There's like that little muffler or exhaust pipe that runs up in the fender. You can see just the back end of it right there. Yeah, it's giving us nothing. So when we put some put some bounce we, we almost immediately hit that muffler or that that exhaust pipe but it's looking good we won't get the full effect until we get the back end down so I think that's gonna be it for this mileage unknown we've got the front end swapped over it definitely dropped it a bunch now Travis got to figure out the tire size and we got to get the back end done I think we're actually gonna pull the stock wheels off of the rolled over 65 because it had pretty new 165 80 15s on it quite a bit skinnier a little bit shorter we're gonna throw them on just to see if that gives it what he actually needs but stay tuned for the next video hopefully the next video when we work on the rear of this thing and actually get the height dialed in <music>